what kind of man is this? Well, that's the problem. He's a very special man. He's the newborn man. We have this beautiful reading from the letter of Hebrews. If you ever have time, you have like an afternoon that you want to really get into um, the, the history of Jesus from a different perspective, read that letter of Hebrews. It's a beautiful letter. And it brings in a lot of the antiquities of the Jewish faith and updates it from the perspective of Jesus coming to us. Um, it's called Letter to the Hebrews, probably written for a Christian Hebrew community. And of course, it, with that in mind, brings out the theology of the Old Testament as applied to Jesus. So this section that we heard today from chapter two is it brings us before time in a sense because he opens the section it it was not to angels that god subjected the world to come instead it was someone else and he put in creation we know god jesus christ the son of god with the holy spirit always existed but in time god creates angels and then all the orders and dominions of angels. And then in historic time, he creates earth, anything tangible, people. Well, Jesus, having come to the earth, is looked upon with quotes as less than the angels because the angels were created before mankind. So the author is saying, you know, he came to earth to undertake the, the earthly experience of life, death, and resurrection. And he was almost like less than the angels. But the irony is, he's the creator, he's the son of God, he's, quote, less than the angels on earth, but he's part of all eternity. So he is, he is all things are subject to him. So that's why we refer to him as the first man, the first Adam, you might say. Adam not a historical figure, but the first beings that create, were created on the earth, no matter where they were created, are beings. Jesus joins that. It's kind of uh, a study in both epistemology and physics, uh, metaphysics, to, to put our minds into that. From all eternity, he becomes less than the angels, but he was before the angels. Kind of it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thought. And of course, it's our theology. And he came to do God's will on earth, God the Father's will. And he quote, closes this section by doing that very specifically as one of the family. He calls us his brethren, which means men and women are his siblings, his spiritual siblings. And he came to assemble us, to bring us together, to, and to praise the Father. Okay, so God, Jesus, comes to us as one of us, but he's above us as he's coming to us. Beautiful. So he's no ordinary man. Well, the people in Capernaum. Now, Capernaum is a little town where Peter lived. We were there a few years ago. And over the foundations of Peter's house, is built a church. So literally, the foundations there, you can see the foundations, and this big church on stilts is built above it in the shape of a ship, like a boat, representing Peter as the fisherman. And not too far from there, walking distance, like from here to across the street, are the remnants of the synagogue, this synagogue that Jesus entered in Capernaum. Because Jesus went to Capernaum a lot, and Peter lived there, so he was buddies with Peter. He, he raised Peter's mother from illness there. Okay, so he goes into the synagogue, and it's the Jewish man's right to read the scriptures, to go up to the front, to pray, and to, you know, gather as a minion, which is a minimum of 10 people, to do his thing. Well, while he's going in, and people recognize then, oh, it's Jesus, it's Mary's son, it's Peter's buddy, you know. And he's coming into the, the temple of Capernaum, and there's a man there possessed by an evil spirit. Now, let's be historically correct. Was he 
convulsing? Was he uh, an epileptic? Was he uh, going through a COVID kind of virus? We don't know. He was ill and he was reacting very, very um, uh, extremely expressively. Jesus walks in, the people are all there. The man who is ill is also there and he sees Jesus and out of his mouth, we hear the words of Satan. What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? Now, this is in the man. And notice the, the pronoun is the plural, us. When Satan acts, he's always with his cohort. So Satan is never alone. The spirit of Satan is multiple. Like, as we know, don't forget, Satan and his followers were once angels and they disobeyed God. We'll leave that there for now. And they have a new kingdom, kingdom of hell for them. So every once in a while, they come out of the kingdom of hell because they're spirits, they can enter anywhere. And this time they entered the body of this sick man confronting Jesus. Now, this is quite a, an experience. Satan, the power of evil in all of these evil forces, possessing this man, recognizing Jesus, and like getting into a battle. What do you, what, what do you want with us? Get, get out of here, Jesus. And what does Jesus say? Quiet come out of him. And you don't mess with Jesus. He's the ordinary guy from Galilee. He's the one from Nazareth. He's but Peter's buddy. But you don't mess with Jesus. He's just not an ordinary man. They thought he was an ordinary man. But Satan didn't. I think it's so beautiful. Satan recognized Jesus as, in his own words, the Holy One of God. You know, I like to contemporize some of our thoughts. There are many people in the world today who don't recognize Jesus as the Holy One of God. And they see Jesus as uh, another nice guy, another philosopher that the Catholics or all Christians uh, like to worship or pray to, blah, blah, blah. But he's just another flick in history. But we know he's just not an ordinary man. He is the Holy One of God. That's why we come here. And after Mass, we'll have the anointing of the sick, a sacrament that he and our faith instituted to carry on his healing work, to, to carry on his, his word in the world that needs him. That doesn't recognize him, but Satan recognizes him. And sometimes Satan gets into the minds of people and cause them to not see Jesus in goodness, in the physical building, in the sacrament, and they blind good people who've given themselves over to evil, to God. They blind them. Satan is very powerful. And I don't mean to be an alarmist, but it, it's very true. There are no accidents in the, I, I guess there are accidents, I shouldn't say there are no accidents, but when we saw the, the disturbances in our country this summer and the disturbances in our nation's capital just a few days ago, um, yeah, there's a bunch of rioters, there's a bunch of nuts leading them and so on and so forth, but at the heart of it was Satan, believe me, it was Satan. Anything that leads to destruction is the opposite of God and anything that's opposite of God, of course, is in the realm of Satan, the prince of this world, that Jesus calls him. So we're here to, to bring his power more and more, because every one of us carries the spirit of God within us. We're here to bring his power to each other here in this building, to those we serve outside, to the, those we visit. Why? Because he's not an ordinary man. We came here to greet and be greeted by the Holy One of God, Jesus of Nazareth. He's with us. He's on our shoulder, sitting next to us. He's in our homes. He's on our streets. We're here because we believe he is just not an ordinary man.
Summoning two of his disciples, John sent them to ask the Lord, Are you he is to come, or should we wait for another? When the people came to him, they said, John the Baptist sends us to you with this question. Are you he who is to come, or do we wait for another? At the time, he was curing many people of their diseases and afflictions and evil spirits. He also restored sight to the blind. Jesus gave them this response, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind recover their sight, the cripples walk, the lepers are cured, deaf people hear, dead men are raised to life, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Blessed is the person who finds no stumbling block in me. My brothers and sisters, we're here to gather in faith, and we ask the Lord to watch over us and heal us. Come and strengthen us through the holy anointing. Lord, have mercy. Free us from all harm. Christ, have mercy. Free us from sin and all temptations. Lord, have mercy. Believe and relieve the sufferings of all the sick here and those for whom we pray. Lord, have mercy. Assist those who are dedicated to the care of the sick Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Give life and health to all of those who are ill, on whom we lay our hands today, and those for whom we pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Praise to you, God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself to share in our humanity. Praise, Holy Spirit, the console, your unfailing power gives us strength. God of mercy, ease the sufferings and comforts of all of us gathered here whom the church anoints with this holy oil. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The anointing is with the brush, and it will be the, the forehead. So um, maybe you can just come up individually. Okay. Through, through this holy anointing, may the Lord in his love and mercy heal you.